As this South African save finally comes to a close, we are in our 10th season of the save and somehow we've managed to perfectly execute direct attacking football here in South Africa. With this tactic, we managed to score loads of goals and even get big victories over top teams in South Africa like Kaiser Chiefs and Stellenbosch as well, Mamelodi Sundowns, we did go on to beat them by two goals to one. Towards the end of the season, it did get harder. We did lose 4-3 to Kaiser Chiefs at the end, but still we went on to beat Mamelodi Sundowns and we went on to finish in second second place that's qualifying for continental football here in Africa. We're predicted to finish somewhere around 7th place so this is something that has been really difficult for me in this save trying to topple all the big boys and trying to push everybody and then I realized that my board was right after all. If you look at the club vision here they've been asking us to play direct attacking football, counter attacking football, direct attacking football but in previous seasons I've been playing with short passing because I feel that's slightly more effective on football manager but this saves kind of just debunks that myth for me and it's possible to play attacking football, direct attacking football in this game and still go on to win games. Now we did get knocked out of the South African Cup and then out of the South African Super 8 but this was really really early and they didn't really pay too much attention to this the board. We went on to lose only three games throughout the season to Kaiser Chiefs, Super Sport United and Maritzburg United. Now Kaiser Chiefs and Super Sport United you can see that Super Sport United actually went on to win the league and Kaiser Chiefs were a close second they were actually pushing us all the way and that was interesting to work with. But we went on to beat everybody else and they managed to earn a draw in some games that I feel we should have won if we actually went on to draw less games and win some of them we might have won the league eventually because it's really really close but if you look at the team stats we do have the highest amount of goals in the league by 70 and then Kaiser Chiefs in second do have 65 Super Sport United went on to have 61 so they were kind of focused on defending so you can see that they have the least conceded as well but we are in there as well in the least conceded in third place with 28 goals conceded and then the most clean sheets were in there as well in third with 12 clean sheets so we were doing quite well even though we were playing with a very attacking style of play it's quite solid defensively and then if you see the most points per game we're in in second 2.17 and then Super Sport United that went on to win the league had 2.33. The player stats as well are quite good. Patrick Michele did go on to have 12. He's probably one of my favorite players in this save and then Lesedi for two days, my deep line playmaker. He went on to have nine assists all season. My goalkeeper is in there as the least conceded in Luciano Jones. He went on to concede only 21 goals and then the other guy in Oswizen went on to win the league with his team in Super Sport United. So it was a fantastic season altogether and we'll look at the tactic that I used to go on to achieve this and in all honesty it's two tactics really, not even just the one tactic. There's a third tactic in the middle but I hardly use this. This is usually towards the latter stages of the game or in a very very big game then I go on to use these two sitters in midfield and then one central midfield but the main two tactics that I use is the 4-3-3 system here which was in like 20% of our games then this is a slight 1% like I mentioned and then the most tactic we went on to use this the 4-2-3-1 system with the roaming playmaker and a deep line playmaker in the number in the DM roles let's put it like that now for my super keeper I opted for a super keeper on support Lina it wasn't really the, going to be the super keeper in this case I did bench him because Jones was slightly better and slow Jones was actually the one that played most of the season but the super keeper you can see there's no instructions attached to him as well I had a big debate between central defender and ball playing defender and in this case I realized that central defenders work better for this team so it worked better for the tactic and for them I didn't include any instructions as well so they did still play those long balls like as if they were ball playing defenders and that's because of the way the team's instructions are set up so we have a wing back on attack duty playing on the right hand side and we have a wing back on support duty playing on the left now it's important to note that I did switch these two players at some point so often I had the wing back on attack duty play on the left hand side with the inverted winger on support and then I had the wing back on right duty on the right side play on the attack or on support sorry while the left back is on attack duty so it was often like a switch now my roaming playmaker was the key guy in this tactic this was usually lesser the Fortuna he's not on the list right now but he's, he's going to leave the club at some point really really sad but take more risks and run from positions that's basically the roaming playmaker no additional instructions attached to him the deep line playmaker was the one that was kind of holding it when Lesedi Fortuny was running forward and controlling the game. So this is the deep line playmaker on support DT, shoot less often and take more risks and hold his position. Traditional for a deep line playmaker on support. And then the key position here was the attacking midfielder on support. Now I did have problem with this because at first I started with attack and I noticed that just asking him to move into channels, run from positions and take more risks would also help him get into position while helping out the midfield. So I opted for the support duty role and then my main, I'm actually going to drag the main player in here because I've noticed that my players have switched a bit so this is going to be Vele Bailly this is the main player that actually ran
ran the show for us and you can see that his energy levels are slightly down because he has been playing all season on either side i decided that i'm going to have an inside forward and an inverted winger as opposed to the wide player that's the winger often i would bring the winger in and that's when i bring a different player and there's a way you kind of approach football manager with tactics this is what i normally do if i do have a player that is okay let's look at this more close to here he's traditionally a right footed player but he can play on the he can play with his left foot so i can ask him to play as an inside forward but if i do go on to bring a player that is let's say too right footed and he can't really use his left let's try this other guy okay left foot is somewhat reasonable if i drag this guy to the right hand side here i'm going to have to ask him to play as a winger but i don't do this on my tactic screen i only do this during the match so it doesn't affect my tactic screen so that's how i've been going about it and in attack i started with the pressing forward but it didn't really work out the way i thought it was going to work out they did go on to score goals often i do use the pressing forward let's look at van ransberg now he has an aggression of 18 and if i ask him to play as a pressing forward he might go on to be slightly more aggressive than i want him to be so i noticed that van forward does make that run into the box and it was kind of helpful for us because the runs were important the reason why that is, is if you look at the team instructions we do have a mid block instead of the high press so we're using a much more often trigger press but we're playing with a mid block and a high defensive line the team is asking the opposition to go outside and then we're going to try to stop the crosses from there this is because if you look at our team's goal scoring negatives you can see here the goals considered we often consider most of our goals from central positions so i just opted if all our goals are coming in all the goals that we're conceding are coming in from central positions we might as well just ask the opposition to stay outside and that's what actually how i went on to include this option midway through the season all the way to the end and that kind of helped us a whole lot to concede less goals now for out of possession now for in transition phase sorry the counter is really really important because my my board of directors have access to play counter attacking style of play so we went on to include counter for the counter press i noticed that we were allowed to do it i was it was okay for us to do it because we weren't playing with a high press so we're not really out of our shape defensively we're in our defensive shape so if the opposition goes on to lose possession here that is when we're going to counter press but if they have the ball in this region there's no need to actually force it we're not going to try to do anything it's when they get into our region that's when we can actually force the press and press them relentlessly now for the attacking in possession what the team you can see here first of all slightly more direct passing slightly higher tempo that's it and then as a team to be more disciplined i think this kind of helped us a whole lot because we're not the best team in the league allowing us to stay in shape and look, control ourselves don't do anything too fancy don't do anything too rash really did help us and then walk the ball into the box instructions often at first i didn't like this but i realized that it actually helped us because we're playing with a slightly more direct passing style of play so asking your team to walk the ball into the box helped us to be a bit more conservative when we're in front of goal not too wasteful we're actually methodical about the approach of actually going to pass the ball into the net find that way but in, in delivering the ball into the front players my players did a whole lot of direct passing and now you're going to see that i have two central defenders on defend duty here but they're still going to act like ball playing defenders because they have been asked to play slightly more direct passes so you see them hit long balls over the top to try and find the striker or the attacking midfielder or any of the wide players that are cutting inside finally the general mentality for this tactic is attacking the reason why i opted for attacking is because i noticed that positive was too passive it was too possession based and we we're not looking for possession more than my fans kept complaining that we we're not playing the style of play that we wanted them to play and noticed that that's because we were playing a positive mentality so i shifted to attacking because i kept it on balance in fact in some games i did use balance to start the game but more often than not we kept on playing on attacking mentality and you see the team wants a counter attacking style of play you need to be fast play attacking football that's what they want so i stuck to that even the in periods where we weren't winning games i didn't really see a need to force anything too fancy i wanted my team to actually understand what we we're meant to do and that kind of paid off in the end and now you can see the familiarity we're all used to it now except slight role changes and if i bring in the main squad that's supposed to be in here the, uh, the familiarity is going to go up because they're going to be more familiar with their roles and their positions so in case you do want to test out this tactic i'm going to attach a link in the description with all three tactics because i do think this system here this is slightly you know slightly more cautious but i think it's going to be important for you as well because it has similar roles and the 433 system are also going to include this and then the main tactic in the 4231 attacking system i haven't actually given this tactic a name so it's interesting to see what the name is going to be at the end of this video so i'm going, actually going to save it immediately after recording this video and then i'm going to give you the name and you'll see the name when you go on to download the tactic so if you did enjoy this video remember to leave a like on it and we're pushing for 2000 subscribers so thanks a whole lot for all the support that you guys give to this channel i do enjoy that i do appreciate it a whole lot and this is the should I say penultimate save for this South African league because I've actually done what I wanted to do to create a team from the lower division in South Africa and try to bring them all the way up to the Premier League and then go all the way to second. That's good. So I do want to play Europe. I could have stopped the save right now, but I do want to play continental football. Sorry, not Europe. I'm used to saying Europe because of the European teams that we play with. We're going to CAF now, the continental football in Africa. So I do want to play that. So I might go on to play another season 
of this save before I completely do it. But this is probably the last video you'll see about this save. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon with another video.